<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. Uh, sorry. And it's 4.30 in the morning. You should oh, never tired. be up at 4.30 still trying to get laid. That's what happens. You start doing the coke, yeah. and all of a sudden you went to a bar, that closed, you went to another bar, you're fucking throwing down cash. You haven't oh. even gotten laid yet, and you're still ch- Then she wants to go to Denny's, and then you got to go oh. hang out at her house, and she wants to do more coke, and then all of a sudden, at 4.30 in the morning, it's not, you don't even give a fuck anymore. It's oh. like, it's got to happen... In the first two hours. And you know it was a horrible one for me in the summer when this would happen and I had jobs. So it would be like 4.30 in the morning yeah. and I'd be still trying to get laid and then I had to be up at 7 to go to my construction job. Uh, oh. So you'd be carrying wood all day, exhausted. And you didn't shower so you get that Smell. oily fucking stank in your undercarriage. Uh, your ball sack is sticking to your thigh. I'd come home and fall asleep before I even got my clothes off. I just hit the fucking bed <laughs> sideways, yeah. out cold. Yeah. Wake up in the morning, do it all over again. Oh yeah, I used to park cars at a country club, and uh, we would go out. All we would get paid in cash, tips. We'd make a good hundred and fifty bucks in cash. I was sixteen, seventeen <laughs> years old. We'd go out to the bars, do shots all night, get laid. We'd go skinny dipping. There was a pool that we'd break into, and it was a bunch of teenagers that would all skinny dip. On any given night in the summer, if it was hot out, you go to that pool, there was naked teenagers swimming, and you could get laid pretty easily, <laughs> and then we would go, and then we'd have to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning to park cars, because the golfers <sighs> came in, and we'd get there, and we had this little wooden shack, and we'd run up and down the stairs, park in these cars, because it was down a hill, so you'd have to drive it down the hill, run up, drive it down the hill for hours, and then finally, they'd all be out on the golf course, Kick back in that shack and just fucking lay on the wooden floor and sleep for a couple hours. Oh, working while you're tired when you're a kid is so important. Yeah. It's so important to realize how to power through things. Because mm-hmm. you don't power through shit when you're a little kid. They make, they make you take naps. It's yeah. quite the opposite of powering through. Yeah. Like, are you tired? Look, like, Greg, just take a nap. You need to take a nap. I don't want to take a nap. Go take a nap. You had to take a nap at school. Remember that? Mm-hmm. You used to have nap time at school. Yeah. Then you take a nap when you got home. And then all of a sudden, no more naps. All of a sudden, you have to work. Mm-hmm. Like, and it happens over the course of like a couple of years. Yeah. Now you got to get up at six. Those summer jobs. Those were the big eye-opener for me. That's when I knew. That's when I fucking really knew I could never work construction. That's when I really knew. Like Summer jobs when I was in high school and right out of high school. It's like, fuck this. Yeah. Because I had no, jobs. No, it's true. You should bust. You should make your kid bust his ass in high school so he can realize he needs an education or he needs yes. to pick something to do young. You got to pick something to do different. Because I had other jobs that weren't as hard. Like I worked at Newport Creamery. Hmm. I was a dishwasher and then I was a cook. It wasn't that hard. I mean, it sucked. It wasn't fun. But you cook burgers, make ice cream, you know, like sundaes and shit, milkshakes. And before that, I was the, the guy who washed the dishes. I moved up. Nice. I moved on up, bro. I didn't want to take the waitress job, though. Too much responsibility to be a waiter or a waitress. <laughs> waitress. <laughs> <laughs> Lipstick. Yeah. Put I didn't, on perfume. I didn't look good, good in those tights. But <laughs> um, that was like my only job that I'd had until I started doing construction jobs. Yeah. My dad's an architect. My stepdad got me gigs. He's an architect. And he got me gigs in the summer, like, like real jobs. Mm. And I was like, holy shit. Like when you're a laborer. You're a 16-year-old laborer on a construction site. Fuck your life. Yeah. Fuck my life. Every day. Fuck your life. Mm -hmm. And plus, I didn't know how to hydrate back then. I never drank any water. I drank like a Coke in the morning and then all day, no drinking water. No no awareness whatsoever. Probably didn't wear any sunblock. No, I was bronze, like copper. Yeah. And I would just fucking carry shit all day and be so tired. But I remember thinking, okay... You got, there's got to be a fucking plan. We got to make a plan to mm-hmm. avoid this. You can't be doing this. Because yeah. I knew guys that would do this. My friend Leroy got me a job once. This was a really important turning point. Him and his friend Hank, they would renovate buildings in Dorchester. It's a real shit neighborhood, real bad. And these buildings were like basically like completely wrecked, and they would redo them. And this one guy, he was like semi-homeless. He lived in this 
place while they were redoing it. And he had a Mountain Dew jug, like a two liter thing of Mountain Dew that he filled with malt liquor. And he would just drink this Mountain Dew jug of malt liquor all day. He'd be just blasted all day on the construction site. And we're walking around, there's like exposed beams. There's um, to the left and the right, there's um, fiberglass, you know, that's uh, over lattice. Yeah. So you could step through and you just drop right through to the floor below. Yeah. And this fucking guy walked like a ballerina, drunk as fuck. His name is Jeff. I'll never forget Jeff. Walked around this this construction site and just barely not stepping on nails, just barely and drunk. Yeah. Like hammered. And everybody knew it. Shakes. He, his hands would shake. Just He would hold the mountain leader, the, the two liter mountain dew thing, and he would just yeah. be fucking shaking while he was trying to drink. Wow. Full on alky. And you were like, that's my future. <sighs> I didn't think it was my future, but I knew it could be a future if you did what that guy's doing. Yep. Like, whoa. Yep. Yeah, you realize that, uh, you know, with, with I had a job. I was actually in college, but one summer I went out to uh, the Hamptons. Me and my brother and this other guy from Northern Ireland, Sean, he was fucking drunk. And we shared a uh, studio apartment, flea-ridden. First two guys in got the fold-out couch. Third guy was on the floor. So you'd try to fucking get See, home before the fleas. other guys. With fleas. Oh my Covered God. in fleas all summer. Did you guys have a dog? Did someone have a dog? No, somebody must have had a dog before. The place oh. was infested. Oh, no. And I would go down. My job was I would ride my bike. And I remember it was six miles. I would ride my bike to the beach. And, and I had to get there at like 7 o'clock in the morning. And it was an outdoor beach club. It was a bar, basically. Brooklyn would unload and show up at this place. It was called Summers on Dune Road in the Hamptons. And they had two outdoor bars that each had six bartenders in it. Pow you know, power pouring, like fucking Tom Cruise and cocktail. Chicks in bikinis, bartending. And then inside, two more bars with six more bartenders. Speakers the size of a fucking Volkswagen. So I'd get there at 7 a.m. My job was get the fucking dolly and get 10 speakers outside that were all the size of Volkswagens. <laughs> Plug them in. First thing was do that. And then I put on 2001 Space Odyssey at 9 to clear off all the drunks that were sleeping on the sand from the night before because you had to pay to get in. So they wanted to clear the fucking beach. All these people get up, scream with their hands on, dun, 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 dun. You're like, shut dun, the dun, fuck dun, up. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then I would carry up, me and the other guy would carry up racks, you know, booze racks with like fucking 15 bottles in them. Carry them up, stock each bar for six bartenders. Start bringing up fucking garbage cans full of ice. Filling up the troughs with ice, Ugh. bringing up cases of beer, stuffing the beers into the ice. I mean, and then and then all of a sudden people started trickling in around 9, 30, 10. Crank the fucking bad disco music, <laughs> power pouring in the bikinis, Guido's showing up, chicks that would, I would have to clean out the bathroom, the women's bathroom, at least three times a day. It'd be clogged up with tampons. These nasty fucking Guido <laughs> chicks from Brooklyn would stick their bloody tampons in. There'd be, and then the men would throw fucking broken bottles into the urinals. I'd have to clean those out all day long, up and down. And this, the ice was down a flight of stairs with this broken down shitty ice machine. And all day long, I weighed 125 pounds, up and down the stairs with buckets of ice on my shoulder, oh. cases of Coors Light. And just fry, and it was all outside, so I was getting fried from the sun. And I'm thinking, this is great, I'm gonna get laid. I didn't get a fucking conversation with one of those chicks <laughs> all summer long. All I did was drink Miller Lights, and then a few times a day I'd run down to the beach, dive in the ocean, and fucking cool off, come back. But I made bank. These bartenders, they knew I was taking care of them, and they were, they were making thousand dollars a day really yeah they were making crazy money wow and they would all tip me out it's fucking you know 15 bartenders all tipping wow. me it was three of us me and two other guys wow and then i get on my bike at around six o'clock and i pedal back to our little flea infested studio apartment and then take a shower and then we go to this place tequila murphy's up the street and we dance <laughs> we'd fucking dance to like you know, uh, Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock. <laughs> That's right. The art of noise. And we and I would break dance and we'd stay there till <laughs> fucking two in the morning. And I'd come home, oh get some God. more flea bites, get up and do it all over again every day. <laughs>